What's the best way you've seen someone rebel against school rules? I was at a private school that had rules about the length of boys hair. One guy in particular always ignored the rule and the administration would tell him to get a haircut every so often, but he never did. Eventually when his hair got about down to his shoulders the principal pulled him aside and told him his hair was twice the allowed length and by next week it needed to be shortened by half. Monday rolls around and he comes in with half his head shaved, and the other side as long as ever. We were impressed by literal interpretation of the principal's request, but it still ended up with him getting a suspension for a week and he had to shave the other side before he could come back. Back in the 1980s there was one kid in my school was hardcore into the punk scene, had a bright blue, 6 inches high, razor thin, stand up straight mohawk, the principal gave him detention for being a distraction, etc, and his parting words that day were and tomorrow no more blue mohawk. The next day the kid came in with the same mohawk, only bright pink. He should have seen this one coming. No hats in school. In high school junior year, there was this one kid in my grade that was allowed to due to him having alopecia universalis, which is basically having rapid baldness. A new teacher wasn't aware that he was allowed to and asked him to take it off. The kid explained why he was able to, but the sub didn't believe him, forced him to take it off and was being very cruel to him for wearing the hat his lack of hair. The next day, everyone wore hats to school as a sort of rebellion against the teacher. She got really mad and started yelling at the students and said some nasty things. She got fired. Senior year, my school banned jackets. A friend was cold, wore his jacket to lunch, and the VP told him to take it off. Friend pulls out the student handbook and asked where it said he couldn't wear it. VP flips for a while and ends up showing him the, or anything the administration seems disruptive. Clause, friend rolls his eyes but takes off his coat. The next day, friend comes in with the same tweed sport coat the VP wore every day. After the Columbine shooting, our school banned black trench coats. For the most part, nobody cared, except the mysteriously gothic trench coat kid. He had worn a trademark black trench coat every single day because it made him different. And then all of a sudden the school tells him he can't do that anymore. So the kid went out of his way to find, or make, different colored trench coats and wore those instead. My favorite one was covered in duct tape. After 9 stroke 11 my school made a rule where we had to wear our school ids. They went overboard quick handing out detention to anyone who didn't wear one. One kid had his id blown up and put on a shirt. On the back it said yes I'm wearing my fking ID. He got detention for not wearing it with the shirt. Just after the Virginia Tech shooting, when I was in high school, the administration banned backpacks messenger bags. Purses were okay though. One guy shows up to school with a purse. They suspended him for two days. The next day, most of the guys showed up with purses carrying all of their things. They lifted the backpack ban. Last day of senior year, we started a food fight at lunch, and by food fight, I mean we drew angry faces on an orange and an apple, then faced them toward each other, made a big circle around them, and we all reacted like we were watching a fight. All the security guards ran to break up the fight, only to make their way to the middle of the circle to find two pieces of fruit sitting on the ground. A buddy of mine was caught messing with his phone during class, back then. The school rules were that if you were caught, your phone was confiscated for an entire day, and you couldn't get it back until the next day. This was before smartphones, and the rules have changed since the 10 years that I graduated there. So, buddy hands in his phone, but doesn't seem to worry about it. He waits a couple of classes until lunch break, and asks me to come with him. He's gonna get his phone back. We go to the staff room, where the confiscated phones were held and asks a teacher there if he could copy down a phone number into my phone, so he could call his dad later that day. Teacher agrees, and gives him the phone. I hand him mine, and we wait for him to copy the number. When he's done, he gives me mine back, and sticks his own phone in his pocket. He was known as a bit of a joker, so when he jokingly said, Welp, thanks a lot, see ya. The teacher immediately laughs, tells him to stop messing about, and to give the phone back. Laughing and joking about being caught. He does, but not really. See, he had a second phone. Exact same model, except this one was broken. Wouldn't charge anymore, he said. So, when he stuck his good phone in his pocket, 
It was right next to the broken one. When the teacher made him give back the phone, he just gave back the broken one. It was the best switcheroo I have ever seen in my time at that school. He was so fluent, so nonchalant about the whole thing. It was amazing to see. Halloween costumes were banned at my high school because of some idiots like 10 years before that dressed up and used it as an excuse to hide their face while they vandalized the school. My senior year more than half of the class decided that we would still dress up and march into the school together in the morning. We all knew we would be punished right away, but it didn't matter. I stayed up all night making a suit of armor out of metallic duct tape and cardboard, along with a broomstick horse to ride. The next day we all gathered in the parking and waited for Everone to show up. People went all out and there were a lot of amazing costumes. And after about 20 minutes of waiting we started our march in. The deans had learned of our plan and were waiting for us right as we entered. They started pulling people aside in groups and taking student IDs to hand out detentions. In my group there was one guy dressed up as an ATM and when the dean asked for his ID he started making ATM noises and then slipped the ID out through the slot where you would put your debit card in. It was one of the funniest things and I was so jealous that my costume was not as clever as his. Even though having so many of us participate was pretty awesome, his costume just made that whole event for me. Friend was told in high school by his guidance counselor not to waste his time applying to his dream school because he wouldn't get in. He got pissed off and went to the principal, who told him it was the counselor's job to give her best opinion, so he trusts whatever she says. He applied anyways, and got in. He took the acceptance letter, made a copy, and taped them to both the principal and counselor's door with thanks for nothing, written on both. He didn't even go to that school. He couldn't afford it, but it was the principle of the matter. We had an awful Spanish teacher in middle school who collectively punished the class by making us write the same sentence a hundred times over in detention. On one of these occasions my friend and I asked her if we could type our detention in the computer lab. This was when computers and schools were a new thing, so we could improve our typing speed, and she said yes. Anyway we didn't do much typing but did learn how to write a basic program that printed the same line a hundred times over. When I was in high school, there was a rule implemented that if you showed up late to school, you had to go to the front office to get a detention slip, you would then have to give it to the teacher for that period, who would then mark it down, and you were required to go to lunch detention for that day. I figured out by the third slip that literally no one cared, teachers, security, or students. So when I was subsequently late for the rest of the year, I would take out an old slip that I had from a previous detention, walk through school, give it to my teacher to mark down, then take it back to give to the lunch detention supervisor. But I never went to detention because the front office didn't have record of me being late. I was late no less than 50 times my senior year, only having been reprimanded the initial three times. I even told my parents about it after I had graduated and even they agreed it was dumb and funny. My school had a similarly easy to abuse tardy system. Three tardies less than 10 minute late equaled an unexcused absence. And you were allowed 13 of those for every class, so... That meant you could miss the first 10 minutes of every class 38 times with no consequences except teacher annoyance. It also reset at the semester break. No idea why the policy was so lenient. Except that it was a very upper middle class school full of high achievers who vastly outnumbered slackers like myself. When I was in grade 7, our last class of the day, students would always bring in snacks. Our lunch shift was way too early in the day. So by the end of the school day we'd all be feeling hungry, and we were all told by our teacher that if we didn't have enough to share we couldn't eat in the classroom. One day, almost all of us brought in enough food to share, even with the students that didn't bring anything in. We even synchronized the times that we pulled all our food out. Our teacher was clueless. She had no idea what to tell us. There wasn't any school-wide no food in classrooms rule, so she couldn't run to the principal. Finally she gave in to our malicious compliance and allowed us to share food for the rest of the period. So Viet Anthem plays. Guy was wearing shoes against the uniform policy and was asked to put on shoes from lost property. He went around school barefoot all day. We had a French teacher who was really bad and most people barely tolerated. It happened a few times that whoever arrived first would stand outside her door as if waiting for her to show up and unlock it. 
and the rest of the class would just queue up behind them pretending to believe them. Meanwhile the teacher would just be sitting inside wondering where her class was. Me and my Spanish class did this once but the difference was we loved our teacher and just wanted to play a joke on her. We also told her that the whole class was going to skip the next day and she didn't believe us. We skipped, except for maybe 3 kids, and got ice cream instead. We showed up at the end of the period and brought her ice cream to and she just shook her head. What a woman. She's like a second mom to all of us. Last year our school fetched in a ban on backpacks and bags in general since they were apparently a safety hazard two days later some guy in my year group comes in carrying his books and pencil case in a microwave. Dude made national news. A 17 year old student at Spalding Grammar School in the UK protested his school's ridiculous ban on bags by taking his books and supplies to class in a microwave. The Sun reported, it wasn't just a microwave, either. Jacob Ford also carried his supplies in a large wicker basket, part of a lawnmower and a saucepan. According to Spalding today the silent protest got him a two-day suspension. On Thursday, I was called into the headmaster's office to discuss my document and was told that I had undermined my position by writing a serious report, only to follow it up by taking ridiculous items to school, he said. According to the paper, I was told that I had a choice to make. Either to have a serious discussion about the issue or to continue my rebellious streak and force the head to take me out of circulation Ford's mother supports his protest and said she believed in his right to free speech. What a refined legend and what a dumb rule for the school to try and enforce. A kid was passing notes, and the teacher caught him and insisted he had to give the note so she could read it out loud. He ate the note. One of my classmates got sent to the office for wearing gang colors because he has a red marine corp bandana tied to his backpack. The rest of the year he wore a pinstripe suite with vest and carried a fedora. Funny how the mafia isn't considered a gang. My daughters both went to a Catholic high school. My younger one had a bit of a wild streak. The girls were required to wear a skirt every day to school. My daughter did not care for this rule and wore her skirt around her head one day since the dress codes required the students to wear a skirt. Just not wear. I was told that she was wearing spandex underneath. That's how my daughter got a new rule in her high school dress code. My high school was always issuing new dress code rules for the girls. Mini skirts had to be longer than your arm, no tube tops, etc. One day, all the boys dressed in drag, breaking all the rules. No violation because the dress code specified only girls. Elementary school had a ban on extreme hair colors. My brother shows up with fire truck red hair. Principal stops us both as we're entering the school and she's going off on my brother. She's berating him, saying who do you know that has red hair like that? Without skipping a beat, Ronald McDonald. Principal just grabbed him dog him into the office. My fourth grade brain was in shock that he just won up to grown up like that. She called my dad and he promptly didn't give her f and months later bro went from red to green to purple. Okay so we need to have clear backpacks, right? This kid puts quite the vulgar image depicting the counselor on one of his notebooks and packs it against the edges of the pack. Hey Joe, aren't you supposed to be in class? Yeah, one word. Doesn't look like much in text. But he said it's such full acceptance and resolution that the teacher didn't follow up or say anything else. Just, okay, got it, you're not going. I'll move on and not waste any more time here. And they kept walking. Sometimes attitude is everything. Sometimes you can say a lot with a single word. As a teacher, I never fight to make random kids in the hall follow the rules. It's a bad path to start on. I get enough stress from my own class. I can't help but laugh at the teachers I see constantly yelling at kids in the hall that they don't even know. In my private school boys were required to wear a collared shirt. It really wasn't enforced, until one day it was. I was wearing a sweater without a collared shirt underneath and I had to go back to the dorm and change. I argued that I didn't look ratty or underdressed at all. But they said rules were rules. The next day I wore a white t-shirt with a collar, cut off from one of my older shirts, stapled to it. It looked terrible, but rules are rules. This was prior to smartphones circa 2002. One of my classmates was a regular class clown. He would buy brownies in the cafeteria and roll them up in his hands so they looked like a convincing piece of poo. He would then do all sorts of antics with this poo. 
put it on seats throw it at people what have you. Obviously the school staff caught on and he got in trouble. This guy didn't go quietly though. He was required to sit alone at lunch for the entire school year. There were months left before summer. The one teacher who made sure his punishment was severe made regular rounds of the lunchroom to maintain order. She would pass his lone seat during her rounds. One day he made another very convincing pastry sauced poo and had it ready for her when she passed. The entire lunchroom was watching out of the corner of their eyes while maintaining an alibi conversation with the people close to them. When she passed he stood up and snuck behind her and slipped the pastry poo in her purse that she was carrying on her shoulder and he quickly ran back to his seat. The lunchroom burst into laughter and the teacher had no idea why, until later of course, the dude was an artist at rebellion. Had vending machines outside the buildings, but due to some hat vandalizing them, this understandably pissed the school board off. The machines were put off limits, but could not be powered down due to some kind of contractual obligation of constant availability. In an effort to combat that faculty were posted at the machines during class changes to prevent purchases. But, thankfully, no one was posted at the machines during class time. Mind you this is 97-99 era. We weren't happy as that was our sole source of caffeine on campus. We decided to heck with that and made purchases during class. Me being the live, tiny guy I was, was conscripted to be the buyer, while the teacher was either out of the room or indisposed, or let's be honest, intentionally distracted, I would collect cash and requests, for at a time, and hop out the emergency escape window that they had opted to not have an alarm on and walk 20 to the soda machine and make my purchase. This went on for some time until the drink companies lambasted the school board for not restocking their dwindling supplies. Allegedly as per contract, they put two and two together and realized that purchases were still being made. Apparently I was not the only gopher, and lifted the ban on my last year.